When the Leatherman Arc came out, people were shocked at the price. $230 for a multi-tool? How crazy. And yet, it has sold very, very, very well. So when they released a variation, the Obsidian, at $45 more, $275. Yeah, well, it got a lot of strong reactions from everyone, including me. So today we're going to talk about the why. Why did I buy the Leatherman Obsidian? Why should you consider it or not consider the Leatherman Obsidian? And what implications it has for Leatherman itself? Let's go ahead and get started. Before we talk about the Obsidian, why did I purchase it in the first place? I've come to the realization that there are two things that made me buy this tool. Number one, I am absolutely a multi-tool collector. There's no way around this. I'm going to do my best to get access to tools, even if they've been around for a long time, so that I can use them to uh, compare, to represent, to showcase, and also to develop my understanding of the genre. I'm going to do that, right? For sure. The other part of it is that if I don't say something, maybe someone will have less information than they otherwise could have had and will not be able to make as informed a decision. So I have a responsibility to try these tools as they come out and to share them. That's the why. Now, when I opened the box, the first thing I re realized is that this might be the best looking Leatherman I have ever seen. I don't think the pictures do this thing justice, but I gotta tell you, the champagne accents, they are beautiful. It's not a gold or gaudy gold coloration. It, it actually looks very, very nice. And I was also surprised to find there were a lot more components that were put in this coating, just like the blade, than I initially realized. So it's the pivots, it's the pocket clip, it's the screws, it's the diamond file. Even the diamond file has gotten this same coloration coating. The locking bars as well, along with the springs, all of those have received this sort of uh, DLC coating. And there is a functional benefit to it in this case. It's going to help with corrosion resistance. That is, there's no question that it will absolutely help with that. It's going to prevent oxidization. And so in that regard, there is some improvements over the base model. In addition, the entire handle scale is also coated. It is not a black oxide, it is an actual coating. You can kind of see the reflection of what happens with this. It's kind of got an oil slick look. It is coated both inside and out. And so also the scales will be less prone to corrosion. Now, as far as the tool set is concerned, the tools, including the uh, saw, the bit driver, the can opener, all of these tools here, you can kind of see the finish on them, that little kind of dull look. That is because these are black oxide which is similar to past tools that they have done. That is true for the scissor. It is true for the saw and true for all the internal implements. It is also true for this plier as well. Now, there's some misconceptions about black oxide coatings on multi-tools and other things. Black oxide is not necessarily going to be uh, strictly better than stainless steel. The reason to get a black oxide finish from a functional perspective is primarily for military-based tools because you don't want something reflective that will give away your position. That's the primary reason. Otherwise, you would much rather know where that tool is located, right? And the other thing about black oxide is that when something does rust, and it will still rust, although it's a little bit more resistant, you may have a difficulty actually finding the rust spots. So it's a give and take. But in this case, I gotta be honest, I really, really like the look. All right. The other thing that is noting that's noteworthy is I have over the last three years purchased more than 30 Leatherman multi tools. That is not an exaggeration, that is an absolute fact. In fact, if I'm, if anything, I am uh, rounding down, okay? I am very much the, a whale. And I will tell you, there has never been a multi-tool I have opened with action 
better than this one. In three years, 30 tools, this is by far the best action on a plier I have received. When I squeeze it, which is usually my concern sometimes when you squeeze the tool, it locks up. Absolutely nothing here. Perfect. For once, a perfect plier head out of the box. I was shocked um, because I've consistently had them be too tight and I have to work to get them to this level. This is exactly the way every single multi-tool from Leatherman should come and I was very pleased to find that to be the case. Now while we're on the subject of plier heads, they are still using those weird cutters that have the gap as you can see. You know, not my favorite thing. They are also blackened on this, on this particular tool. And uh, one of the first things I will do is exchange these cutters for the ones I got from Poland that will cut a lot better, both hard and soft wire. But other than that, it's pretty much the only downside that I've seen from a construction purpose, and it's consistent with other tools in their lineup. It's not considered a flaw in the sense that they made a mistake, but rather that they're doing this and you know, you kind of have to accept it. The tool set is otherwise identical to the original Leatherman Arc. And it's also worth noting that the coating on the blade here for both tools is going to be a wash on price. Both of these are going to have a coating. The price will be essentially equal. So the only things making up the difference from the this tool to this one is the additional uh, DLC coatings on all of the components, which is not insignificant in cost, and then also the accessories like the sheath, okay? This is definitely going to be a tool directed squarely at people who collect multi-tools. And you might not think that's a big number, but it's a big enough number to justify the release. And this will likely sell very, very well, whether you like it or not. We're gonna talk about the implications a little bit further into the video, but I want to finish up with the remainder. As positive as my experience has been with the Arc Obsidian, right out of the box, it has everything dialed in correctly. The finish is gorgeous. The fit and finish, everything. This is very much a good representation of a premium multi-tool. Absolutely. I would say the opposite experience has been true with the accessories that it comes with. We'll talk about that here in this section. So we're gonna put the bit kit aside. We're, we'll start with the sheath. This is where my disappointment starts. On one hand, the per, part of the reason that I purchased this tool was because I saw on other reviews that they are actually using a USA made leather sheath. And it harkens back to my first multi-tool I received in 1999, the original Leatherman Wave. And I, always carried it in that leather sheath, sh leather sheath, and I loved it. It was so, so quality, just quality sheath. And so I was thinking to myself, okay, you know, I think I would pay an extra $20 for a good American-made leather sheath to come with my tool. So how is it? I am sorry to say this is not one of their quality pieces, or at least it certainly doesn't feel like that to me. The stitching on the back is not bad. The quality of leather is okay at best. Um, in fact, this is definitely like below the quality of the leather that I've seen on other tools like, like this one, which let me pull this out. This is the Mr. Crunch and it came with a riveted sheath and the leather quality in my opinion on this is quite a bit better, pretty much all the way around and even the functionality of it. I like the larger openings and I wish they had simply gone with this. It would have just been a, a much better choice. And they could have, of course, made that in black. It, it just also sits more compact, right? It just, it sits nicer. And it still would have had enough room, potentially, to expand it to include that bit kit. Now, speaking of this, this is where I get really frustrated with Leatherman. I wonder if they even bothered to test it. Bit kit goes in here, and that, in theory, sounds really great until you try to actually stick the tool inside. And the problem is, is that every time you do, the little pieces that are part of the lock catch and stop it from going in. If this is on your hip, 
you're gonna have to jam it in and every time you do, you can already see, and I've just started using it today, it's already ripping through that elastic material. Like, it's the first day and all, already this thing is going to fail on me. And I know that. They could have used a strip of leather which would have held up quite a bit better. They could have done what the nylon sheath has, which at least use a nylon insert. A nylon insert would have the slipperiness that would allow the tool to slide in without damaging it. And you can use a thousand D, which would absolutely hold up with a much, much better um, longevity. Okay. So the use of the elastic here, really a disappointment. And as you can tell, it's going to take I'd say two months of actual use every day for this thing to completely crap out as far as the bit holder is concerned. It, just a really disappointment on that front. Now, I don't have much more to uh, complain about as far as the, the, pot, the uh, belt holder. I thought it was kind of small and then I realized that the original was the same dimension. So, you know, that's fair. I, I would prefer it to be longer, but I'm okay with it the way it is. I also would have liked to have seen like maybe putting that gold inlay like they did on the Mr. Crunch on the front of the sheath. I mean, it is a $275 tool. I think you can go all out. In fact, technically speaking, the Mr. Crunch was less expensive than the um, Arc Obsidian. You know, this is worth over $2,000 now, but, you know, that's besides the point. The, the, this, the simple fact is they could have gone a little bit further. And I think as a collector, as somebody who wants to have the accessories match the tool in everything else, I would certainly want that, you know, a light, slightly better sheath. Now, am I nitpicking? Of course I am. I have every right to nitpick, as should everyone who buys one of these or chooses to buy one. Because if you're buying one, you expect the very, very best. No exceptions, no excuses, right? This is the tippity top of the list when it comes to production multi-tools. $275. It better be flawless. No excuse. And so they delivered on the tool, congrats, but then we have the rest of it. The sheath, really mediocre. I would have rather them save the money, or at the very least, give me that knockoff heritage sheath, uh, the leather one that, that looks like the tail of knives. You know, at least that would have been uh, <laughs> something, and, and at least it would have been a little bit better. Yeah, they're made in Romania, I get that. But, you know, they're gonna match really nicely. And this is my current sheath. Let me take out my tool here. Works like a champ, looks beautiful. I would match much rather them not include a sheath whatsoever so I could purchase a want a proper, well-designed, well-constructed leather sheath that I could use for the next 50 years. And frankly, I have no doubts that this one will last that long. Now, putting that aside for the time being, I want to talk about this bit kit. Now, it's the same bit kit you will get in the original Leatherman Arc. I didn't like it in the Arc, and I like it even less when it comes with the Obsidian. At $275, I expect a full bit kit. I'm sorry, I do. It is disgraceful that they continue to include these this nine bit set and i should have done this a long time ago a long time ago but this bit kit samples from both the left and the right versions the bit kit one and bit kit two from leatherman in fact i'm going to show you this picture right here and on this picture i have highlighted the the implements i'm sorry the uh the bits that are included from each set. Now you'll notice there are eight, eight highlighted bits, but there are nine bits here. And that is because in addition to um, having those bits, there is one that is not present on any other, any other uh, system. And that is this R3, R2, which is a Robinson uh, two and three. There is already a one and two in here already, one and two. So this is a duplicate Robinson number two and a number three. So that is the ninth bit in the list. If you were to try to assemble a kit that had the remaining pieces, you would have to buy the complete bit kit. So it begs the question, why does this have to exist? If I'm going to have to buy the $30 complete kit already, why not just include it? Yes, only one will fit in the sheath, but I'm happy to assemble 
exactly the, the nine or 10 bits that I want and keep them with me, right? I'm not gonna use all metric or all imperial. Uh, I'm not gonna use both of those types of hex bits usually, um, most likely. And if I, I do work in that industry, I'm going to have dedicated implements for that purpose. But when it comes to countries, like in America, we're more likely to run into, um, you know, I guess it's maybe 50-50, depends on your industry, imperial than I would run into uh, metric. So I would just craft it the way I want it, but include both bit kits, I mean, both bit systems, not having this mishmash of bits that don't really make any sense. That's, that's, that's my thing. Um, and I really feel like this deserves, this tool, which is so beautiful and so well built, deserves to have all of its accessories matching on the same level. And it just doesn't quite deliver in that front. Will you love the tool if you're a collector? I think you will. But should you buy this if you're just thinking that one or done tool? I'd, I, I'd have a hard time justifying it. Now, the implications. Let's talk about the implications of this tool because it's a big one. The Ludman Arc, the original, is a tier three multi-tool. There are two tiers lower that are potential for Leatherman to release. And the easiest way to illustrate this is using the Wave series. Um, just imagine for a second over here, we also have the TTI, which I do not own. The Wave is a base model that most people can afford. It's also the number one selling multi-tool of all time. And it's still to this day, I think is probably the best selling multi-tool and still probably is the number one seller for Leatherman. It's a base model, so people who just want a tool can get access to it. But if you want to upgrade, if you want to get something a little bit more premium, you can get the Charge Plus. The Charge Plus comes with a bit kit, I believe. I'm not 100% sure, but it comes with a bit kit and it comes with a pocket clip. So it's got a little bit of extra something something, and it has a pull cutter in the serrated blade as well as the 154cm um, main blade. So slight improvements overall. And then you have, now this is discontinued, but you had the G10 models, which were just kind of at or about the same level as the TTI, which had S30V blade steel, just like these have S30V blade steel and the pull cutter, etc. There was no one complaining about these because there was always a base model. The problem with both the Arc and the Arc Obsidian is this is like the same as the TTI or the G10 charge, because they're, the base model variation could be none of the black coatings, right? None of the DLCs, no bit kit included, and then the base price for the tool could be as low as maybe 199. Let's say it was, let's say we have a variation with the magnet cut steel, plain stainless, no, fin, no extra finishes, no colored pivots, no nothing, no bit kit, basic uh, nylon sheath, for $200. Okay, so there's, there's tier two. Tier one is a version of the Leatherman Arc that has 420 stainless throughout. Same tool set, basic nylon sheath, comes with the pocket clip, let's say between $150 and $160. If we had that base version, no one would be upset about the rocks, the, uh, sorry, excuse me, the Leatherman Obsidian. No one would be upset about the Obsidian or the Leatherman Arc. No one would even bat an eye. would be like, oh, that's cool, you know, because I have my tool. And so I feel that the real issue here and the reason I got initially pissed off about it and I think so many other people are is they are feeling a little neglected. The primary buyers are people who want tools to help them get through the day. That's what Leatherman has prided themselves on for 40 years. And the people who want the surge and the Super Tool 300 and the rebar and the wave and so on, they're feeling a little neglected. We haven't had an update for the surge or the Super Tool 300 in more than a decade. And these just feel like a focus on something that yes, it's cool and, and yes, there will be a market for it. But in the meantime, they're losing the, the trust of the core consumer. And so I think th what Leatherman needs to do at this point is if they are planning on making one of those lower tiers, whether it's a base model 420 
or one with, uh, without any coatings and is cheaper, they need to, at very minimum, let people know. Let people know what's happening the next six months, the next year, so people can feel like, oh, you know what, they are working on it. Not letting people like me craft the narrative in the empty space of their silence. They really need to take ownership for their, their story. If there's things coming out that the general user can be excited about, waiting is a bad idea. We are in October 2024. Christmas is just around the corner. If there is a base model version of the ARC coming out with the tool set at $150 or $60, now is the time to get people excited because otherwise they're going to start spending their money elsewhere before those, those tools come to pass. Waiting too long to spoil those things is a bad idea. And the implication is also, if that's not going to happen, which going even higher seems to indicate, assuming no information from Leatherman, then they're going to get even more frustrated people coming after Leatherman. So, to finish up, Leatherman did a good job with the Obsidian. It's a, it's a nice offering of a premium tool for collectors. But it's certainly not for everyone, okay? It's certainly not for everyone, and I would not recommend this as a first tool. Uh, yeah, that's, that's basically where I sit. Now, I will finish this also in saying that currently, as of today, Leatherman is offering a 15% discount on most of the items on their website for the next two days. If you're planning on getting something, definitely check it out. Uh, this might be one of your few opportunities to get a discount on Leatherman goods. In addition to that, I will be coming up with a video, video later today talking about that sale, what you might want to consider picking up and so on, but definitely you're going to want to uh, check it out if this is something of interest, whether it's the Leatherman Arc or the Surge, whatever it happens to be, they'll all be discounted, and that's a rare thing these days. I'm going to leave it here. I'm very interested to hear your thoughts down in the comments about State of Leatherman, the Leatherman of Arc Obsidian, and just the general conversation. As always, thank you guys so much for your time, and we'll talk again soon.